Pedro from the Imperial X. I'm here today with Cato from uh, Green Carnation. How's it going? Um, I'm quite quite okay. I think it's uh, certainly challenging times, but um, but we've been through this um, uh, album launch now, and and uh, maybe people have more time to listen to music now because it was a really nice weekend with all the nice reviews coming in and everything. So that that helps a lot. Obviously, situation is still quite strange, but uh, yeah, I think I'm good. It's kind of a, a of a strange mix, right? Because for one, you can't go on the road, you can't play live shows, you can't tour. On the other hand, everybody's stuck at home with nothing to do, which gives people more time to listen to music. Yeah, and so for myself, I've been listening to music a lot lately, like the last two months, much more than normal because basically nothing else is happening. So, so I've, I've tried to to stay positive towards this and and check out lots of new music, for example. And um, yeah, I'm kind of enjoying that. Before I ask you any questions about the new record, I have to apologize. Uh, I have to apologize to you and I have to apologize to the band because I've only discovered you guys through this record. So oh. that's 100% on me. Uh, it's my fault. Uh, I should have been I should have been more enlightened. Uh, I should have listened to the, to the band a lot earlier. But thinking thinking about that, do you feel like this is a good record for for a new listener listener to discover the band with? Yeah, I think it's both um, both a good record for for new new listeners and old listeners uh, because um, <clears throat> uh, it seems like that on the feedback as well. Like you, you are an example on that, and uh, I think when people take the album for what it is, I think it it's not as extreme in 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 the certain direction. It's kind of kind to the ear, I think. So so I think many people could actually enjoy this. So um, and it certainly looks like that's happening right now, which is great news for us, of course. Yeah, the album was a great surprise for me. Thank God for this pandemic. Uh, otherwise, perhaps would have gone under the radar. And this way, I not only got to listen to a great record, I got to discover an incredible band. Uh, you, you guys been 14 years since the last record. Were you guys working on some music, saving it for a rainy day or perhaps for a pandemic? Uh, perhaps for a pandemic, yeah. Uh, well, we, we were disbanded basically for 10 of those 15 years. And we got back together in 2016 uh, to to do a 15 year anniversary, like uh, anniversary year for our, uh, I would say, breakthrough album, Light of Day, Day of Darkness in 2001. Uh, and basically the idea was to to do that that project together and see if, if we had a good time together again and stuff. And luckily we did. So, so we started immediately kind of planning towards the future. And it took us three years to finish off this album, but we've also been uh, we've been working short term and long term on the same time, uh, so to say, because we we are kind of like right now we're working on on the next thing as well, and we have been doing that for two years as well. How is the process behind creating a record like this? Do you, do you guys work it on it together, separately, throw ideas around? How how does Green Carnation work behind the scenes? Um, this new album is uh, is a mix between. Uh, ideas from from the, from the bass players, Sven Rogos Udal, uh, and um, 1,000 telephone calls and um, and studio sessions with me and him, and uh, doing like small or bigger uh, changes in the structure of the songs, for example, and then bringing it to the band. Sometimes try it out on rehearsal room and do some changes because then we can kind of really hear how it sounds. Um, but also uh, feedback through emails and stuff. And uh, I don't like this. I don't like that. This needs to be double the length, or that's unnecessary. So it's been it's been a, a band effort as well. And of all the songs, we only think Hounds was the only one that we didn't kind of try out on on the rehearsal space. Mm -hmm. Two of them have have already been played live for a couple of week, uh, years, actually, in different kind of versions. Uh, where did you guys get the name for the record? Uh, Leaves of Yesteryear. It's it's such a, a somber uh somber title which actually fits extremely well with the overall mood of the record but i, I thought it was i thought that perhaps there was a little bit of a hidden message with that title yeah it, it's not a it's not like a genius a hidden message to be honest with you but I, I like you said i think i think the title fits the atmosphere in the album a lot and there is a certain level of re retrospect on the album as well so so kind of it fits that retrospect uh, um both um you know, uh, when it comes to that rearranged song from our first album, and and um, and that this, I've said in interviews that this is this is an album where we where we remember our history and we try to find 
our strongest elements from our first period uh, and bring that through through 10 or 15 years as you know developing as musicians and and, and people uh, personalities and then try to kind of have a fresh fresh ear when when trying to um, to make this new album so basically it's not a it's not a genius thing I think but uh, it's 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 something that suits the record and for us this time around what's extremely important to like to, to do no compromises on the album because um, there might be some bold choices there when it comes to rearranging one of your like doing a cover version of your own band for example uh, as the centerpiece 15 minute centerpiece that we needed that song to be on this album in order for this album to be like we wanted it to be also with the Black Sabbath cover in the end mm -hmm. uh, Solitude uh, we could have put in one or two of our own new songs there because we had more material but we needed that song for the, for the album to be exactly what like we wanted and that's maybe not easy for everybody to understand but when when seeing your uh, review I, I thought that was a great review because you took it for what it was you didn't like overanalyze why didn't they put in one or two more songs for example you, you, you no I, I thought the album was complete the way it, it, honestly it didn't need it sometimes I, I feel that sometimes bands try to do too much yeah, and, and because they don't want to be simple, and sometimes simplicity brings complexity in, in, into the mix. And I, I thought you guys worked walked that fine line perfectly with the album. Yeah, I think so. It was important for us, and it was something we decided to do for, before going to the studio. Is that like we want to make this, and now we have to do everything we can to to be able to make this, and and um, all you know alien elements should be taken out for for us to to present something that's like. That you will get if you listen from the uh, if you listen to the album from from the first to the last song. I'm I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Were you guys feeling? I, I don't I don't get that sense, but I have to ask you. Do you were you guys feeling a little bit of pressure considering it's been such a long time be, between records? Were you feeling like you know uh, you know we're gonna do what we want to do, but at the same time, in the back of your mind, you're like, wow, you know, people are gonna are gonna be judgy considering how long it's been. Yeah, honestly, uh, that's a little bit of reason why it took took us like two, two years to write the album but that pressure comes from us ourselves to be honest with you because we put like really 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 high standards on ourselves and I think maybe we we were working on six or seven songs that didn't didn't um, reach the album because the thing was that in order to respect our band's history and legacy uh, like releasing an album after 14 years the album has to be good enough for us because it makes no sense to to <laughs> To go into the studio, uh, deliver um, deliver an album that isn't as good as it could be after 14 years. Then we then like we said before that if that happens, we we'd rather just throw it away and quit. Yeah, I, I think would perhaps in your mind would would tarnish the legacy that the band has. It would tarnish the name of the band, and yeah. it's almost one of those things that either you're gonna do something great or or let's just not do it at all. Like yeah. you're not gonna half half ass it. No, that's exactly what we uh, agreed uh, before starting work working on the album, and, and and basically to to do no compromises when it came to to, the, to this, and and luckily we we think we succeeded. So yeah. When you were looking at the songs, as you said, there was a few songs that you guys had that didn't make it to the record. Did you make the decision on the tracks to be inside the record based on the overall atmosphere and mood that the album had? Was it important to keep that? that record very cohesive all the way through was that the main the main decision yeah absolutely and you can say that like solitude uh, the last song and uh, my dark reflections of life and death the 15 minute centerpiece it, they are quite different when it comes to how they sound but they still have the, exactly the same atmosphere so so that atmosphere what was what we needed from the first to the last song and that's something we learned by you know, we're working with the same when it comes to live shows uh, because we, we we need to be like we need to start the concert and then do the entire gig and then and then people can relax after the last song it's not like we cannot stop and do like a 10 minutes uh, you know stand up show between each and every song because you would lose the you would lose the you know it takes the some time to yeah yeah and it takes some time for people to to get into what we want to say and when we have them there we need them there and that's how we thought with the album as well did you guys struggle with the tracking list thing? Because I thought the track list played a huge role in how the album flows all the way through. Did you guys struggle in how you were going to put those songs together? 
Yeah, that was something we worked on uh, with the two or three different options, to be honest. Um, uh, one of them was that Solitude was not going to end the album, but it became quite obvious when we listened to the songs in the studio that this has to be the end, the end of the album. Also, I think uh, maybe Tentinals was the last song on the album in an earlier uh, suggestion, but, uh, but I think we... I think we landed on the right thing. Uh, I cannot really see how it could have been different, to be honest, right now. It's easy to say now, I guess, but uh, yeah. Yeah, when, when, I, when I look at it, Solitude has a little bit of, a, of the curtain coming down feel to the album. It, 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 it's like full stop. The album ends here. If, if the song came earlier on, it would be kind of hard to reignite the album afterwards. Yeah, exactly. At least that's my perspective. No, but it's, uh, you, you're completely right. And that's the reason why we brought it uh, to the end because it, it has a kind of a, a end feeling to it as well i think yeah yeah it, it really does that and we i spoke about this before the album in my opinion felt simple and complex at the same time the dynamic of, of feeling simple at the surface but the more you're listening to to it the more you discover all the little pieces of it the more complex it becomes so it's almost an album that you rediscover it every time you listen to it. It's almost like you're listening to it fresh. Uh, was that something that you guys really wanted out of this record, that, that feeling of being simple but complex at the same time? Yeah, I think that's, uh, that's, that's our style, uh, kind of. Uh, we've been doing that on, on several albums, and I don't know exactly how, how you do it, but it's basically <laughs> this something that happens with us. And I see actually many people saying exactly that, with the, especially this new album. Um, and yeah, we, we're not like, okay, we're a progressive metal band or whatever you, you can call it, but it's like, it's not like we want to put as many tones in a song as possible because that I don't see the point in that because I think we are working more with atmospheres mm -hmm. uh, than, uh, or, I play with, uh, with technically brilliant guys, but that's not what's driving our music. So, um, so I think within those atmospheres, I think you have maybe some of those uh, different layers of, of sounds as well that you might not think about the first time because you hear it the first time, but maybe you, you think about it the next time or, or the time after that. So, so obviously that's also like when I'm listening to music, songs and, and albums that grow on me, it's often because of, of things like that. So, and the strange thing with this album is like we finished recording in October last year. Uh, and we had the fin finished mix since, since November. And none of us seems to be sick and tired of the album yet, which is a really good sign, because normally when you work so much on, a, on, a, on you know, composing, demoing, going to the studio, sing the same chorus a hundred times, you, know, <laughs> you don't really want to listen to it again for a while. And, but it's not been like with, uh, with that, this album, it's not been like that. So um, that must be a good sign, I think. <laughs> yeah, it has a, 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 a fresh feel to it. Sometimes you listen to an album, and at the end of the album, you're like, well, this album was great, but I, I honestly can't remember one single song that, that jumps out at me. It's great as a whole, but it just doesn't have that individuality. And I felt with this album, it's, it, it's, it does both things. It, it's a great album that you want to play it on loop, but at the same time, you can still go back and pick each, every, every single song individually because they all have their own soul. They all have their own DNA that they bring to the overall sound that, that the record has. Yeah, I think it's they all have the same core, but then they yeah. like fill in different direction, kind of. Yeah, that's exactly like our band is put together as well, to be honest. <laughs> so we, we yep. have we have your representation. Uh, yeah, we have a you know we have a guitarist from the from the early black metal era in in Norway. We have a keyboard player that's that's basically like he's he does many genres, but I would say if you choose one genre with him, it would be blues. And the guy who who had the, the ideas for the new songs, the bass player, he seemed to country music uh, <laughs> and, and, and like Black Sabbath and, and pop. Uh, we have a drummer that's been doing a lot of, of uh, Latin American music. He's originally from Chile. So it's, it's like, um, and, and I'm listening to all kinds of music, Tom Waits being my favorite, and, um, but also listening to a lot of new progressive and, and, and um, uncompromising stuff. That's what I like. Yeah. So, oh, it's, it's Still, there is a little part of us that is exactly the same, and that's what you hear on the album, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it's a, a melting pot, a melting mm. pot for sure. Uh, the vocals on the album were very engaging. I felt that each track had little nuances that really reflected 
the temperature of the song that really engaged the song. You didn't you didn't change. There was not too many changes, but there was just like enough to really enhance the atmosphere that those specific tracks had. Was there a thought process going in, into the recording that you really wanted to to do that to 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 give each song its own unique twist? Yeah, it's it's not a thing we talk too much about, but I think that also fell quite not uh, quite natural for me because the way I work with music is like I, I listen to the songs so much and and um, read the lyrics, so I I need to to have you know the song being a part of myself, and I think. For example, Leaves of Yesteryear, I must have listened to maybe two, two or three thousand times before going to the studio. And and that way you kind of, you sense the, the small differences, the slight differences between the songs. And, and then I didn't really think too much about that in the studio, but I think it was just a nat natural thing that you have to do what the song needs and the atmosphere needs as a singer. Uh, and uh, I think that went quite well, yeah. What's your take on the, on the backing vocals on the album? Because to me, they added a lot of volume, they added a lot of texture. Uh, they gave the songs a different dynamic. Uh, what's your perspective on, 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 the, on how you guys used backing vocals and, and, and the layers that you guys did with the vocals? Yeah, um, we have a, like me and the producer of the album, we have a history. He obviously produced our album from 2001, Lights of Day, Day of Darkness. And he was also in the band when we uh, returned in 2016 doing keyboards. But, but he was only going to do that that year. So we have the original kind of keyboardist back now, but um, he knows the band so well. And I've been working with him on a lot of different albums and we have a dynamic when it comes to especially the, especially the backing vocals and harmonies. That's something I honestly haven't heard too many, too many other bands uh, doing exactly that because uh, we're playing with them. Um, it's, it's very fun to, to do vocals in the studio uh, with him because yeah, there is a dyna dynamic there, and uh, I'm a big fan of, uh, of of vocal harmonies and stuff. And and on this album, we, we discussed if uh, am I going to do my own harmonies uh, because we are three guys in the band who can sing. So him, uh, the, the the bass player and the keyboardist are also, you know, singers. So, but we decided because of because of that um, thing that I have with the with the producer, uh, I was just going to do the. The harmonies. I think there is only one line on the album that's not sung by me. Um, but then again, we know that we can recreate this live with the two other guys, and it's no problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the songs won't surfer at all. And, and, and speaking of live, you guys have a live stream May 23rd, the release of the show. Uh, is this going to be the new normal for a while? Yeah, a while, I would, I would say. Uh, but how, for how long? I'm not sure. But I do think that like in just a few weeks, it's weird how much we can change because when thinking about this was originally going to be a, a live concert for the people in the small time of Christian Sand in Norway and the crazy people who had gone, who would go here from other countries and other parts mm -hmm. of Norway. And, um, um, and right now I think it's so strange that we planned it only for these few people and not for everybody else in the world. Like, you know? So yeah. I think I think maybe on on future at least for us like special so shows and and stuff like that um, I think it would be normal well, uh, in a, in one or two years to to do a combination maybe to do a live show with audience and also share it to the rest of the world which this is much bigger than than this small yeah. venue in Kristiansand yeah I, I mean I I thought about in terms of touring that it, for this I think will start to become a tool that bands will add to their touring because yep. for example if you're touring. Uh, on a on a time zone, you can do a stream for that time zone. Then, when you hit a different time zone, you can do a stream for that time zone. So, you, throughout a, a European tour, for example, you can do easily two, three, four streams from three, four different shows. Add that to the already going tour, and it'll perhaps be something extra that will help bands uh, reach an even larger audience. Because not everybody can come to every show. No, of course not. Of course not. And, and, and that's a possibility that I hope will, will be positive for bands and fans as well. Uh, so there is going to be something positive coming out of this. I'm sure. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> are, are, are you guys nervous or are you excited to play a show with no audience, but knowing that there's actually people watching? Well, I'm, I'm not a particularly uh, technical 
uh, person. So I'm worried about the live thing, the live the stream, and that everything can go wrong, and then you have hundreds or thousands of people all around the world watching a black screen, and we don't want that, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but um, yeah, and I also thought about it is going to be weird to stand there and and do the, your live thing because for me it's so important. It's a two way communication, you know. And now you only have one. So maybe I, I need some people uh, uh, to to be like a crowd to, to to look into their eyes and stuff in order for this to feel a bit more natural. But but we have been rehearsing a little bit uh, on the stage with no audience. So I think if I know myself right, I'm probably going to close my eyes and and then just just be in the music. I think that would be the best maybe. I, I think it's uh, an opportunity perhaps to go back to the early beginnings of the band when you start playing gigs in front of like your family and friends. Yeah, most definitely. <laughs> yeah, we have a, a Nor Norway is kind of is slightly opening now, so we could have actually been inviting fifty people in an audience on this gig, but I think that I think we're not going to do that because, yeah, because it would feel strange anyway having fifty people standing with one meter distance and and, and listen to the show. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's kind of reopening now in Norway. So uh, let's see how it goes. <laughs> If this goes on for too long, are you guys planning on doing more of these shows? We haven't, to be honest with you, we haven't been thinking of that. But now we've had to postpone all our shows. Uh, there is one festival in August that's not postponed yet in Europe. Uh, but from the 1st of October, we have quite a, quite a lot of concerts all around Europe. And uh, But um, to be honest with you, I'm not sure if that's going to happen either. And, and And it's not necessarily just like, Okay, you can play the shows, but who are going to buy tickets for a show in October today? Normally, people would have done that, but I, I haven't. I'm not. I love going to concert, but but I, I was just thinking I haven't got one single ticket for the rest of the year to any concerts now. So, and I'm probably not the only one who thinks like that. So that's also going to be a problem, you know. Yeah, I, I hear you, and and well, and with people losing their jobs and and all of that kind of stuff too, that adds another another little uh, issue to the mix. Uh, me personally, I went to 120 concerts last year. I, I don't see I don't see myself going to perhaps any shows until next year. No, uh, just because it, it's not just from a, my own safety perspective, but it's my family as well, right? So I, you have to take all of that kind of stuff in consideration. So I think it's um, it's going to be a very interesting time for bands to to come up with creative ways like you guys are doing with a live stream. Uh, I think it's a it's a nice way to still stay connected with the fans and and you have an album to promote. Absolutely, absolutely. But I think like as we we talked about that in in the beginning. But I think because we were discussing with the label, are we going to postpone the entire uh, the entire thing until you know later? But we decided to go to go for the launch. And I think that was a good. Um, I think that was a good, good thing. Uh, and also, we got this, this yesterday. The vinyl. The vinyl, the purple vinyl. So that's that was a Holy big day. Crap. That looks yeah. beautiful. Yeah, it is. Um, it is really nice. Wow. Oh, that, that's the kind of thing that I, I mean. I'm I'm a huge fan of vinyls, and I and uh, whenever I attend a live show, that's always one of the things that I look at the merch stand is the vinyl. And then if you can get it autographed by the band, even better. So yeah. it's it, you take home such a nice little uh, little souvenir. That looks beautiful. It's a great, um, yeah. I think it turned out really really nice, to be honest. So so that that's um, it was a big day for us. I cancelled all my plans, although I didn't have too many plans yesterday. But yeah, <laughs> to, to go and to go and pick it up and and listen through it and look on it and and touch it and everything like like we used to do in the old days, I guess. Yeah, yeah like a kid in the candy store, like when you picked up the, the that record that you had been saving money for a very long time, and then you couldn't wait to get home and read through the lyrics and read everything. Yeah, Who did yeah. the band think? All of those little little things that I think a lot of people now miss on that because with the digital media era. You, you don't you don't get your hands on that, but uh, it, it, was, nothing nothing is better than that. No, I was watching, of course, for looking for spelling spelling mistakes. <laughs> I, I, couldn't, I couldn't find any, so that's good. <laughs> that's hilarious. Uh, I have one more question for you, and that is about the band. You know, this album it's going to be a huge success, in my opinion. I, I mean, it, it's such a great uh, re record from top to bottom, musically and vocally. Uh, it has such a great melody. It, it's just a really engaging album. Well, do you feel like this album now will reignite the band, and we're not going to see such a huge gap? Like we're going to see another album in a couple of years coming up? 
yeah, we, we, we have already made plans for that. All, all, although um, we might have to change it slightly because of the pandemic. Um, but uh, before, before entering the studio in last year, we knew exactly what we were going to do until 2023. And that's what? maybe something, yeah, maybe something you get because you're at an age now that you need to plan because of your, you know, dom domestic uh, responsibilities and stuff. But, uh, but yeah, the, the, the long term project is um, we have signed a five album deal with a, with a record label. And this is the first one. Uh, we're going to relaunch our acoustic album from 2006 next year with it being a 15 year anniversary. So we have redone the cover. Put on some more tracks and done, uh, and press with pressing vinyls, and probably going to do some some acoustic shows next year as well. Wow. And then we have three more albums coming up, and and for the ones who know Reincarnation well, uh, will understand what that means. <laughs> there has been rumors about us doing a trilogy for almost twenty years, and um, and uh, yeah, later this year we were supposed to announce what uh, what the plan was, but maybe we're going to have to wait until next year. It's a it's a stupidly, incredibly stupid, stupidly ambitious project. But uh, that's <laughs> Green Carnation is a little bit more is more. It, it's always been like that. So, so we're not afraid on on taking, you know, doing big thoughts about uh, next projects. And um, yeah, this is going to be something for the yeah, some something special for the future. Yeah. Uh, we I, are, I, yeah. Yeah, we, ha we do have plans for, for a few years ahead, so it's not going to be 14 years until next time. I, I feel like you guys are super creative, so you need those challenges in order to keep the wheels turning, in, in order to keep you guys engaged and motivated to keep on doing music. I, I, I feel that you're not the kind of band that just going to release an album because you have to release an album. Oh, no, 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 no. That, that wouldn't be, uh, be an option for us. And also, even during this uh, period now, we've been having a bass player uh, hyperactive on, on creativity uh, because people react differently on, on stuff like that. Some, somebody just needs to care about their families and loved ones, and, and some, some other people get like really, um, really creative sitting up, composing music all night long, and he's been, he's been like that for almost two, two months. So, um, so we, we do actually have a finished demo, uh, a ten-and-a-half-minute song, uh, which the very few outside of the band has heard it says that oh this is better than the album so that's a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> well that's great news for the fans for sure yeah so we don't know yet what we're going to do with that it's also an economical issue of course but but um, i'm sure if we're a bit creative we'll figure it out somehow uh, you can always squeeze in a little ep later down down the road or something like that uh yeah you know i, I i'm sure fans are not going to be upset no, hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kato, thank you very much for your time today to talk about the record and the band. It was an absolute pleasure. And once again, I have to apologize for discovering Green Carnation this late into the game. My humble apologies. Uh, I, I feel like I owe you and the, and the rest of the guys in the band a, a, a huge apology. So I have to make sure that, that you get that message because uh, you, you guys changed a lot for me this year with this record. It absolutely blew me away. Thank you very much. I'll, I'll bring it on to the to the rest of the guys, but it's never too late, you know. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I, at least I admit my mistakes. You know yeah. what I mean. Like, so, uh, so I ask for forgiveness and I admit my mistakes. But uh, thank you very much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much.